Welcome to another special edition of the Cross Border Interview Podcast. This is our fourth episode Friday before the election day here in the city of Calgary, but also across the province of Alberta. Uh, this episode, we are sitting down with Ward 14 City Council candidate Stephen DeBoss. Stephen, greatly appreciate it for doing this. Thanks for having me, Chris. Stephen, I got to get this question out of the way right off the bat. Where does your sense of duty to serve come from? Um, yeah, I, I'm the City of Calgary firefighter. I've um, been an officer for about five years with the department for t- almost 20 now. Um, I guess duty to serve is kind of maybe a natural condition of humanity. Like I think it, I feel very honored and rewarded that I've been able to have a career where I've been able to serve the people for in the way I do in the capacity that I do and to uh, learn with other uh, great mentors over the years and uh, able to craft my skills and work with good people to, it's a great feeling to be able to uh, show up at somebody's emergency and kind of know what you did made the difference. So uh, yeah, I guess one thing that appeals to me would be about uh, Going to city council is with the fire service. You're able to serve one person, a couple people, maybe maybe more at a time um, at an emergency. With this situation, you might be able to help the whole city with what you choose to do. And uh, if you conduct yourself ethically over time, I think you can do a lot of good through that career. Now, you, you made a mention of the, your city council run in 2021 on Monday. People will be voting for you. People have already started voting for you on a, a advanced voting. But why in 2021? What was the issue to you, to Stephen, that made you decide, I want to get involved. I need to get involved because this issue it needs to be addressed. I think, Chris, I think a lot of people are looking at politics these days. Um, people that didn't look at politics before. I've always been interested in politics, but never um, had the urgency to get involved. I feel like, to me, there's definitely been a lot of government overreach at the federal, provincial, and I even see at the municipal level these strange ideologies coming in. And um, I'm a patriot. I love this country, and I want it to remain glorious and free. Um yeah, there's things I've seen with city council that have kind of sounded the alarm, um, the fire budget being picked away over four or five years, but more of the, I don't remember prior to this Nenshi administration ever having closed door meetings at city council and then having such um, dramatic impact on our civil liberties, even past what the provincial government's doing. Um, and my question is, where is the evidence for these uh, thoughts and mandates coming from? Um, is it just the ever-changing, altering data from AHS? Because if that's the case, we really need to be asking ourselves, is there not a better way of getting this real-time data so that there's not such an impact on um, our business restarting for one thing and not to mention our civil liberties? Now let's start there because uh, let's talk about some policies and it sounds like uh, you are a freedom loving man. I think everyone at the end of the day is they like their freedoms. They like to be able to travel with uh, without restrictions and like to do things without a government telling them to not do it or do it. What is the biggest issue that you think the city of Calgary is facing in the next four years? And if elected on Monday, how do you plan to address that issue in your mind? Yeah, it's definitely the overreaching uh, government with um, these restrictions that are preventing our economy from growing. Um, businesses have had a hard time over the last few years prior to um, the lockdowns because of the COVID-19, there was issues, with oil and gas tanking, and then the lockdowns just kind of the punch to the gut. And now the uh, open, closed restriction type mentality by um, particularly our, our own city council putting the screws in even further than than the provincial government. If we don't remove the obstacles to allow businesses, particularly with small businesses and medium businesses like restaurants, bars, rec centers, gyms, that have a very small uh, margin of profit to, to flourish, if we don't help them, 
to go forward as much as they can, we're going to have a decreasing tax base. And I tell you, we'll be lucky um, to be even to cover essential services, not to mention the big projects that we want and desire as Calgarians, like the sports complex. Um, a lot of people feel like the Green Line is a very important project. Um, I think personally, the downtown police station is an essential thing that we don't have. And not to mention our fire and police budgets. We talk about that because businesses are struggling right now. I think you have alluded to that. And I think uh, if when I talk to the businesses up here in the Northeast, they are saying the same things. This roller coaster of closing, then opening, and then closing only indoor and then allowing patios, it's hard on their bottom dollar because businesses have to adapt to new government restrictions or not restrictions or uh, it placements. It, it's hard for businesses. When you're talking to businesses in Ward 14, what are you hearing from them? What do they want the city to do? Yeah, I think most of them are feeling the pressure. They're also worried too about the liability issues. Nobody's talked about that. Um, now the government says it's up to the businesses to mandate it. The businesses to mandate it. So does that mean that if somebody comes back with um, a discrimination lawsuit that they're on the hook for it? I think that's number one in, in their eyes, what's scaring them. Um, not to mention that if they don't go along with this, they'll be shut down. Uh, I went to a great restaurant in Inglewood. I think it was uh, not last Saturday, but the Saturday before. And this guy's business was, he was full. His, his restaurant was full to the brim all night long. Um, walking down Inglewood to get to his restaurant, I would say I didn't see one restaurant that was more than 25% full. This was a Saturday night on a nice evening. Um, he has opted to not mandate the Vax Pass in his restaurant. He's pushing against um, the city and he's getting... Um, they're coming after him, right? So uh, I'm doing what I can to support him because I believe in what he's doing. I believe these laws are not laws, mandates are unjust and unfair and are out to destroy small business and medium-sized business. And I think people have to either take a stand or, or lie down. But I think what you do now is going to, uh, you're going to look back on it in your life and uh, reflect on the stance you took against this. This is going to be a pivotal moment in our history, I think. It certainly is. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what you're hearing from residents, because we can talk about the mandates, we can talk about the restrictions, but there are a bunch of things that are affecting cities, our city and our communities across this great city. What are you hearing specifically from residents? And I should note for my listeners and to my viewers, before you answer this question, Stephen, I am going to give you the questions that the, we were going to be talking about last Thursday before a gentleman with a gun decided to try and break into my house and we had to cancel our uh, debate. So I do apologize. So I will be asking That's the okay. questions that residents wanted to ask you. So I hope you were willing to in, indulge me in that for a bit. But I want to know from you, what are you hearing from the residents outside of the the lockdowns and the mandates that the uh, governments have been imposing? Well, I got to tell you, though, um, outside of the mandates and stuff, the mandates are probably somewhere between 30 and 50% of the concerns. But outside of that, there's a lot of stuff that's coming up. Like tonight, I was getting inundated by uh, concerned residents of with the ongoing um, budget slashing the Calgary Fire Department. For several years, um, for some reason, the fire department is being picked apart. The reason why this doesn't only uh, frighten me and scare me as a, as a firefighter is also... The reality is people, taxpayers, everybody's paying for fire protection. Um, when you're in your time of need and, you, and you're, you're waiting for help to come, you're expecting that they're going to be there. A lot of residents don't pay attention to these things until it comes to the time when the response isn't seven and a half minutes, but it's much longer. Um, this is something that we all need to be made aware of and how we can protect our budget, our fire department from being slashed apart by politicians or lobbyists or um, whoever it is that is putting the pressure on managers to do that. Because it's not the right place to balance a budget 
Um, there is a requirement of money that it takes to run an adequate fire service for a city, and we are not not doing that. Now, uh, as a former volunteer firefighter myself, uh, I, I love when I talk to firefighters as well because they know the front lines and they know the things that people have uh, fire what firefighters need. I know that be, prior to the COVID nineteen, the firefighter department, the firefighters in Calgary moved to a twenty four hour schedule uh, on twenty four hours and off. Are you in favor of continuing that operation? Because I know that the, the I, I I've talked to firefighters here in Northeast and they are, but I want to know from you: Are you and would you be advocating for that if you are elected on October eighteenth? Yeah, it's got cost savings for sure. It is the future of the fire service. There is no doubt. People don't understand with, with just avoiding the double shift time, you're saving like over a million dollars in city budget to the taxpayers because it avoids overtime, right? And you get stuck at a call during the rush hour. So that in itself, not to mention the health for the firefighter prevents less injuries and less book offs in the future because you're not doing back-to-back -back night shifts. I believe what they had figured um, and don't, I guess, don't quote me on this, but from what I understand, it was about 60% of our accidents and injuries happened on that last night shift because of the lack of cognitive function from being up all night the night before, coming home and taking a nap and then going back to work. This way, with the 24-hour shift, you, you get to be rested and have an actual sleep at your house before you go back to work at the fire station, which is super important because our work takes a lot of concentration when the, when the bell rings. We uh, spend a lot of time training, drilling, checking our equipment. It, that's Most of it is preparation for the emergency. And when the emergency happens, it's usually short periods of time, but it's, um, it's, it's an all-in thing um, with 100% of our cognition. And when we're not feeling 100%, um, it affects it. So how do you envision your role as counselor, as a firefighter? Because people want to know the background and how, what you would bring to the city uh, as a city counselor. So how does it benefit the people of Ward 14 to have someone in your in the council's chair in your position as a if elected former firefighter? Yeah, not only is a subject matter expert in fire, because I'm not just a firefighter, I've been on 20 years and I'm a captain and I've worked at the busiest halls in the city for, for several years. Um, so I can, I can speak to the fire service and operations in the best way to make that work, but I can also speak to being a city employee for 20 years. Um, my feeling with the city of Calgary is we need to get more subject matter experts on council. Um, in the mayor's seat, in city manager's seats, and at heads of all of the departments of the city. This way, we're, we'll be, let me put it this way to you. When I'm, as a captain, I end up being in command of a fire. Um, the buck stops with me. There's no place for um, risk management mitigation. I can't go hire a consultant. I can't go hire a private company in that moment. It's all on me. Um, if we applied that principles to our managers, um, our mayor, our counselors, I think we do very well um, in a cost effective way. Um, and if we've hired the right people, that is, for that matter. You, uh, you talk about getting uh, staff members in those positions, people who have lived and worked the city administration. Um, and, I, and I apologize if I'm asking this question inappropriately and just tell me and I will edit this out if you don't want to answer it. Have you not been heard? Are city staff not being listened to? Because as a former city employee myself, that was my big concern. Politicians would tell us what to do and they would never take our recommendations. So is that what's happening at City Hall right now as well? They're not listening to their staff, the frontline workers? It's definitely the way it feels. Let's put it that way. It's definitely the way it feels. Um, yep. It's one thing to roll out a survey that's done by some independent company, but for to have a counselor come and talk to you and then bring it up at city council hasn't happened in my career. Wow, that's, that's horrifying. Um, one of the questions that uh, we were going to talk about on Thursday during the debate was snow removal. Are you hearing about snow removal at the door when you're knocking on doors? 
<laughs> it's one of my main concerns. Like last uh, last winter during the blizzard, some up at Saddle Ridge, and we had our fire fuck, firefighter truck stuck several times. The fire engine up at thirty two. Um, it's you know it is the nature of Calgary. Blizzards come in and roads are treacherous, but there is no excuse for not getting that dealt with in a timely manner, which has never happened since I've been a resident of the city of Calgary for 20 years. So the, the reason I asked this is because we are going to talk about road safety. And the question was, uh, we were stuck a few times in last year's snowstorms because last year I think was bigger than a few years ago. This person was from Deer Ridge. And how do you make our streets more safe? And how do you plow when we don't have money to plow or is that just a line that politicians are saying to us to say, we don't have the money, so we can't plow every single road? Yeah, I think it's an easy uh, fallback in the city of Calgary <laughs> when, you when you have Chinooks, right? Like, we don't have that in, in, in many cities. I think it's the only city I can really think of that's so drastically affected by Chinooks that they almost rely on it, it seems like. But it is ridiculous because I remember after those blizzards that came, uh, I want to say it was the end of December, or first week of January, maybe, there was cars stuck for three weeks on my street, right? And it's that can't happen. We can do better. Yeah. How well, do I think we get over the problem? Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, especially for firefighters and ambulances and police cars who need to have access to these locations. But continue on. How do we get over this issue? Yeah, going back to getting subject matter um, experts in place, I know if you went and talked to street and roads and whoever's in charge of snow removal, the boots on the ground, those guys would have a plan. I know it. We'd go talk to them, figure it out, talk to top 10 of their maybe senior employees, sit down in a little uh, small talk, and then try to figure out who is the best. Give me five guys who would be excellent managers here who could run this department and come up with a good plan. I think you'd see things change in the city if we were to do that more. There needs to be a change in thought process, I think. And you are up and against an incumbent counselor. Do you, are you, when you're knocking on doors, are you hearing that, that it's time to do politics differently? We, we have gotten to the position we are in because we have done politics the same old, same old, same way. What are you hearing about that change, that need to do politics differently at the door? Yeah, I think we're kind of, right now, it seems like we're in a very um, divisive stage in culture. Like so many people are um, stuck on these medical health issues because that's all they're hearing about and they're kind of almost i want to say like traumatized it seems like to me um they're having problems processing this stuff about politics but i think it's important to pay attention right now the reason why i'm running against the incumbent peter demont is um i see the man as a follower he seems to have voted the way council has voted with the nenshi group has voted and i don't see him i can't think of one time of him standing up to them are pushing back. And I, I do see that as a problem. I think people are looking for leaders in politics right now. And on every level, I don't see any leaders, uh, federal, uh, provincial, um, not municipally anyway. Um, so, so I, yeah, like what so I'm, I'm going to challenge go you on. I'm going to challenge you sure. on that statement a bit because that's what I like no my show. I get to follow up with the questions I want to ask. Um, sure. You are going to have to represent everyone even those who don't mm. agree with you, every single opinion that you may, may have, but you will have to represent everyone on October 19th and for the next four years if you are elected. How do you do that? How do you do that in a leadership role? Because you go talk to everyone on your street right now, you will hear 10 different opinions on the same issue. How do you lead in a very divided city that we are in right now? Well, you do learn by listening and having discussions. And maybe there are perspectives that I haven't seen. Um, but I guess part of learning how to be a good leader, uh, I was mentored by some of the best, I thought, on the fire department over the years. They were all captains. They took information in casual times. But there is times where you have to make decisions and stand by them. Um, now, if you're out to make decisions to make money or make politics, these are not the right reasons to be in leadership roles. Um, if you're out to make decisions to the benefit of everybody and stay focused on that goal. Um, that's the right reasons. And that's how you heal the city and move forward. One of the big things that I hear when I talk to people across the city is 
politicians say that, say that exact same thing that you just said, mm. you have to make the tough decisions. Show us how you've done it. Tell me an example. Show me how I can believe you when you say, I will listen to you, but I'm going to have to make the tough decisions. And at the end of the day, I will tell you why I made that decision. Because I think politicians or residents are getting frustrated that politicians get elected and they don't see them for another four years until the next election. Yeah, I agree. And that's why I'm running, because right? I know that's my feeling anyway. And that's not what I intend to do. I tell you, if the city of Calgary would allow me to remain a fire captain and a city council at the same time, I'd be right there in the public. I don't know if that's going to happen because apparently I have to resign if I win. Um, we'll, we'll come to that and I'll challenge city council on it. Um, Cause I think if I could be a fire captain in one of the, particularly in the ward of one of the three fire stations, that'd be an excellent uh, combination of service and help also a way that public could hold me accountable. I'd be always involved with the public. Um, tough decisions. Uh, my history. Well, I mean, the city of Calgary, they trusted me 20 years to come to their houses and emergency situations. They trust me for 20 years to put their fires out. I can't say, hundred percent. I'll let you make the decision if you want to trust me or not, but uh, I've always tried to do my best and it's been an honor and a pleasure to serve the citizens of Calgary. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, I show up and take command of emergencies all the time and make tough decisions um, with people's lives on the line. Uh, I don't know how else I can prove it to the public other no, than that. No, no understandable. Plus at the same time, yeah. literally one of the issues, one of the questions that we were going to be talking about last week was community support. How have you given back? Let's be honest, you've given back for 20 years of service as a firefighter and uh, we appreciate you doing that. I do want to turn to the future though, because I'm just cautious mm -hmm. of time and I don't want to keep you longer than sure. you have to because it's middle of an election. October 19th. You wake up on day the day after you were declared the winner on October 18th. You are now the councillor elect for Ward 14. In your opinion, what should priority be one be for you? First of all, city council. If if I was the emperor and ruler, I could make number one my decision and go after them one at a time. But I've got to hopefully get voted in with at least seven more like-minded people so we can get stuff done um i believe getting rid of these health mandates number one asap is the best way to go for the city to move forward um multiple reasons particularly the divisiveness and the effects on business and moving our economy forward you are I think you and I have the same mindset that you have to put metrics into place to ensure that you are successful at anything you do. Uh, you need to make, put metrics into place that you say, I can come back to the people of Cal Ward 14, the city of Calgary and say, we've done this, 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 and this at this point in time. So while we've looked at day one, let's look at day 100. So this is February, 2022. Mm. What metrics are you going to put into place so that way, if you're elected on October 18th in February, I'm calling you up and saying, hey, Stephen, did you get X, Y, and Z done? And if so, if not, what have you done to start the process? Right. Yeah. Well, um, I guess <laughs> the one thing I tell you about for the fire service, and you know, working with other firefighters and having them hold you accountable, um, also having a lot of friends that will come out to help and, uh, work for you we get stuff done quickly so i don't i don't know of any firefighter who's been in city of calgary politics that i can remember uh do you chris i don't i i was trying to think yeah. of that before this interview and i was looking back and i asked a few people they couldn't either you would be the first yeah so there was a plan that had kind of been talked around with especially with the health mandates coming in and guys um trying to make decisions up if they're going to stay on the job, if they're mandated to give up their um, private and confidential health information. Um, so th the idea was maybe to have uh, 14 of us running 14 different boards. <laughs> we didn't have the time to organize it. So uh, uh, I guess I was the lucky one who was got nominated and <laughs> had the opportunity because I was off duty injured at the time. <laughs> so um, but you know, it's, it's been a ride and adventure and it's been a really quick campaign. Cause I got my name in on the last day of, uh, 
the uh, candidacy it was September the 18th 20th? or 20th, 18th, yeah. September 18th, 20th. 18th, yeah. 18th, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So 20th. very last day, almost at the last hour, I think it was the last appointment. Um, so a lot of the people in the ward were like, what? There was only three candidates. Like uh, Peter DeMond was a bit shocked. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully I give him a good run here. Well, that's good. Um, I want you to take a moment, talk to the people of Ward 14, because those are the people that you want to vote for you. And why should people put their trust in you on October 18th? 18th? Yeah, October 18th. 18th, 18th yep. yeah. my, mind, my mind's blanking these days, but I'll, why should people put their trust in you on October 18th? Yeah, well, I'm doing it. You know, not just for me and my family, uh, we're doing it for the future of all of our kids. I think we're at a precipice here. And like I said, I'm not a politician or ever had um, any dreams of being a politician. I wanted to be a firefighter. Um, I see a major lack in leadership, and that's why I'm stepping up, because I don't see anybody else doing it. And uh, I have a lot of good people behind me. I think you can trust me from my previous record. Or I, I know you can trust me, whether or not I, I think I've had a a good run at public service and could show you that I can uh, get the job done for you. Um, I guess I'm just a also asking you to have some faith. Awesome. There is going to be that one person who's listening to this or watching this, yelling at their car stereo, yelling at their computer screen saying, why didn't you ask him this question? How can people reach out to you and ask you the question that it might tip them in your favor? Yeah, so right now, if anybody wants to come out, we're doing um, car waving between 4 and 5.30 at Bull Bottom Canyon Meadows. Um, if people want to come meet me in person, uh, just waving signs and uh, saying hi to the folks and getting them to think about voting here on October 18th in our ward. Uh, Grace Yan's coming out. She's running for mayor, like-minded person, uh, wants to rebuild business in Calgary. Um, has openly said that she is in favor of voting down the mandates and is a pro-freedom person. And she seems like a really good person too. Good woman. Awesome. awesome. So yeah, if you guys want to come there, I'll be happy to talk to you, shake your hand. Um, also, we have 10,000 door knockers going out. So I got 50 guys running around the city come Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm also going to be doing it. So I'll meet some more residents there. Um, and probably the easiest way is through email right now. Steve, uh, yycw14.gmail.com. Or sorry, at gmail.com. Excuse me. So that's Steve, yycw 14 <laughs> at gmail.com if you guys want to email me that's probably the easiest way awesome and for those who for, for my listeners you know as always email address links to uh, social media are in the show notes so if you do want to reach Great. out to Stephen, please 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 do um steven thank you thank you for doing this this has been an honor and a pleasure and i wish you all the best on monday because we need people like you. We need people who are willing to hold people accountable and hold people to power. So I appreciate you putting your name forward and doing this. Thanks, Chris. I wish you were in Ward 14. <laughs> um, <laughs> for those who have listened to the show before, you know what I'm about to say. And for those who have listened to every episode this morning, you know what I'm about to say. Get out and vote. If you do not vote, do not complain on social media for the next four years. I have no time for someone who wants to complain that their voice didn't matter when they don't vote. So get out and vote. I'm going to be a little bit more harsh when I say this on Monday, but vote like your life depends on it. Stephen, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks very much, Chris.